Well, uh, welcome to the tutorial on company study. What we were doing um, uh, before, I mean, what Ahmed, Abdul Ahmed Musa presented was just uh, the challenge, and uh, now we are going to go into its tutorial specifically. And yeah, let's get started. Um, but before that, let me ping everyone to join quickly, quickly. Let's see. Okay, no, it won't allow me to go there without allowing notifications. So let's get started just as it is now. So I have a couple of open tabs there that we are going to be using in this study. So we are just going to see what we are supposed to do when we do company study, but also see um, what exactly uh, um, is the company research like in real life. So we're going to be doing it together after we see each other's reports. So let's get started. I want to know, uh, before joining 10 Academy, I want to understand, was there is there anyone who did a research first and can you tell us how you did it i know some people just had it from their friends and they just dropped in their applications others um you know i don't know maybe you found it on linkedin or i mean was there anyone who sat and did like a very good research before joining to understand what we offer how long and everything in our policies like everything can you share with us your experience? So I'll be removing it in slideshow so that I can come back to see if anyone raised hands here. So is there anyone? Or if you didn't, you can also tell us how you actually came to know 10 Academy and how you dropped in your application. Easy, yeah. Anyone? Yes, Ahmed. Okay, uh, first, uh, as I remember, I heard from one of my friends about it and uh, also found a, a Twitter on Twitter. So after that, uh, I searched about it and found the website. And I remember I went to the YouTube trying to find anything, but uh, unfortunately I couldn't. I'm not sure why there is another name for Academy, 10 Academy, and other things. But uh, I only depend on the website for, for joining 10 Academy. OK, so you passed on the website. Ahmed? Not sure I got your point yeah. well. Did you pass on the website or actually you had troubles finding 10 Academy's website? Sorry, uh, when... you, are, you are breaking. Um, okay, am I breaking to all of you? Or can the rest hear me? Can you give me some reaction? I'm audible. Ahmed, is this still breaking on your end? Now it's better. Okay. So I was saying I didn't get maybe your it's point. My connection. Oh yeah, maybe it's your connection. But can you share your point again in the chat box? If you can hear us, yeah, please do. Anyone else to share as Ahmed share in the chat box? Okay, Hilary. Hi, so for me, uh yeah. I was at school and I found a WhatsApp group uh, that was uh, that involved other people I studied with and it was formed specifically for the academy. Information was shared. There was a uh, brochure. I went to the brochure and looked at uh, what it was saying, the policy and uh, what they expect to do for those enrolled, like job placement. And I had to go to the website. From the website, I go to I looked at the, um, it wasn't enough for me, so I looked at the social media links, the LinkedIn, I started LinkedIn and looked at the, those people they were referring to who had from being from the academy, the alumni. And then 
I went on to the alumni, looked at what they said about an academy. If it's if if I was if it was legit for me to uh, invest on in it, and uh, mostly I did research on those uh, X uh, and also Instagram. Looked at the links from the website. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. Thanks for sharing, Hillary. And I can tell that majority of the people who are here, you who are still actually in the program, is because you knew something about an academy before deciding to drop in your application. And that's why you're still here, because you kind of had a picture of what it is and what you can expect and what the policies are going to be like, like uh, being full time in the training and everything. And that's why you're still here, you're still aligned, you still connect with the community, just because you did some few research before joining. So this is what actually even the whole purpose of doing company research, you want to know if you can actually enjoy or adapt or be able to work in that company. That's the very first thing. And second, you want to know more about them what they are offering, how they are doing it, who is in the company, who is doing what and what, and how uh, the, the job they posted uh, out there is going to be reflecting in the company, like what department is it going to be in. And you are able also to look up the people in that same department, see what the experiences are like, uh, and if you can feel like by comparing yourself to them, if you can be a fit or not. So that's basically why we do company researches. And also you want to see, you, you get to be more interested in those companies that have interesting missions, some missions that you feel also like you can be part of and you can be successful or even enjoy working uh, towards them, you know? So uh, that's the main reason for doing company research. That's the main reason for being doing company research, just having the overall knowledge about it and then deciding if you're going for it or if you're not going for it. So let's go straight and see more about uh, why company study knowledge then in broader view, it helps you decide if you're a good fit, like we said, for your career goals. Is this something you want? You know, is this the company you want to be part of? Actually, you want to grow in do you feel like you will be there for longer and you're not going to be settling just for one year because you need an occupation? I mean, all those kind of questions, uh, you find them when you are doing this company research. It helps you determine if you can be a good fit or, or, if, he, or, or if even the company is a good fit for you. You know, it, it goes both ways. And then number two, it helps impress the potential employer when you can demonstrate your genuine interest in their organization during the interview process. And that's what we are going to see down here. If you meet a potential employer and they hear that you are talking the same language they talk internally, like you are using, uh, let's say, different abbreviations they use within their department, you are using the same kind of common words you saw in the job description, they saw it in your cover letter and in your interviews, you are still repeating up them. It brings so much connections and it even impresses them on how extent you want. I mean, how to what extent, to the high extent you want for to learn about their company and to build that interest in you and even to demonstrate it to them. It's a big impress, really big time um yeah so let's go into the strategies to note basically before doing the company research number one prioritize the basic information you need there is no company that is going to be expecting you to know a hundred percent of everything that is going on internally no company is going to expect you any to expect you to know that really so Prioritize the basic information you need, and that's what we are going to be seeing in the rest of the contents for this tutorial. And then leverage on the company website. Everything is on the company website. Everything, every single information you may need about the company, you are likely to find it on the company website. Everything internally though, not external things like uh, customers' reviews, or employer, employees reviews or any other external sources information, you are not going to be finding them on the company website, but you can find them 
outside, but all internal information about what is the company, uh, any success stories they have about their team, all other information, uh, in, internal information of the company, you are going to be finding them on the website. So leverage the company website. Number three, master the art of searching. When you are searching up, know the kind of keywords you are using um, for you to get the results you want easily and quickly because of course we are going to be dropping a lot of uh, a lot of application 200 applications per month and you are expected to have done a company research for every single one of them for you actually to know that you're submitting a quality application it's better you do the company research and that's why we even reduce the numbers of the um of the applications you have to do per day like 10 applications only so that you can have enough time to read about the company to read carefully about the job descriptions and ensure that your cv cover letters are all all tailored to the job description and everything so that you you, you know that you actually did your best and you submitted uh materials that you are 100 percent confident in so that's why you have to master the art of searching so that you don't waste your time juggling around all many websites and not finding the information you need so master the art of searching and then next leverage on social media platforms social media platforms they have a lot especially linkedin they have a lot of information on these specific companies so we can leverage on them as well and then next analyze and synthesize analyze them analyze the information you see try to connect dots because even though informations are there majority do not show the big picture of actually what they are doing so try to analyze and connect information so that you can get the information you you can be able to understand the information you need so um key necessary then information to look at like basic information we can expect you to know about every single uh company you will apply on first of all the company history and background very brief thing about them we are going to be seeing it in details and then organizational structure and important individuals then culture and values then products and services current trends very important and then any future predictions they have um, external sources have on that company let's go ahead and use uh on the list we have on the on the list of the challenge we have six companies and we are going to be using snowflakes as an example for this uh tutorial and then when you are responding to the challenge, you are allowed to pick other companies among the rest five. So I think we didn't clarify it well in the challenge document, but I'm going to make edits so that you can ignore Snowflakes in the companies you're going to be choosing. But for now, let's use Snowflakes as the first example we had on the list. So by looking at the company history and background, we are going to be looking at the company websites. Most of the time, look for the About Us section, company timeline, or even historical blogs post, just to know about, about them. Or even leverage on news articles, um, news articles, companies, for, the, the we, majority of them post about interesting things like maybe this company made an acquisition you know they, they acquired another company maybe this company raised fundings or maybe this company did layoffs so all this kind of information about the company history it, they are you can find them on the company website and then news articles and before we go there why that why do you have to know about the company um a company uh, company history and background number one is to assess if you are interested in joining the company you know all those information whether they did fundings where they are acquiring other companies it shows you that the company is growing and there are future hopes that the company is going to be staying longer so if you get the opportunity to join that company you know that you can even be growing in that same company from one position to promotions to promotions on a longer period, five to 10 years. And then uh, if the company has been doing layoffs, 
you know that your probabilities of even joining the company is very low. So those kind of information about the company, they help you know uh, if you are interested in joining the company or not, if you can spend your time on doing the application or not. And then number two, it will help you tailor your application to demonstrate that you share their vision. When you keep quoting about what they are doing, like I know that this and that, um, you know, I, I know that uh, like how this product is so much needed in the marketplace now, just because of this and that, especially in your cover letter, it shows that you know you are sharing you understand what they are doing and you are sharing the same vision and that's why you want to join and that attracts the uh, the, the the potential employer to invite you for an interview because they feel like they can connect with you and then next which is the very most important part of it is that when in interviews the first question most of the companies we ask you is tell us about what you know about our company and most people go in there not prepared especially when you have uh, when you are job hunting and you have been applying to tons of jobs and it's so hard for you to keep track or to remember all companies and then suddenly you get an interview and the first question they ask you is tell us about what you know about our company most of the time you will remember the product maybe because you you can do some research before joining the interview you remember the product but what they are interested in knowing is do you know what we have in about us do you know actually why we exist and then next when you put in something like the current trends or the or no why we exist that means the mission they are on number two anything about the current trends number three anything about what the maybe the ceo or the, or the co-founder has been quoting in their latest event latest conference or any of their youtube released video just it's just like an answer of three sentences that shows that you really understand the company and when you answer this question really well you catch the attention but imagine if you go in the interview and the first question they ask you like tell us about what you know about our company you feel like you are lost you will lose you start to be nervous they will lose interest in you on sport i mean everything and they ask this question before introducing themselves be, because in every interview they start the interviewer start by telling you about themselves about the company about everything but most of the time they are interested in knowing that you know a few so that they know where to start when they tell you about their company so this is the very important aspect of knowing about that part so let's go ahead and see how do we actually get to know about you know these companies First of all, let me start a new search here and see Snowflakes IT company because I saw that there are so many Snowflakes, Snowflakes, no, Snowflakes. So the first thing is that I saw, um, yeah, no, it's Snowflake. I, I, was, I was correct. So the first thing they bring to you uh, is the page about Snowflake because it's the one we were looking for. But the thing I'm looking for is not this. Let me, let me do another search. Maybe because I searched it before. okay this is what i wanted so most of the time when you put in snowflake here for the very first time uh searching about that company you are going to see something like this uh you know the header and then subheaders that can take you directly to where you want but let's say we are looking for everything we are not interested in careers or just you know subheadings let's go through every to everything majority of the big companies the difference between the big companies and small companies is that majority of the big companies you will find that they do not have any section about them at the top headings here they don't because uh 
they believe that everyone who visits their websites should be seeing about what they offer more about who they are more than uh, about who they are not sure if that is understandable but if you can see it well is that uh, on the very first page you see is everything about um how it's easier in the ai data cloud start for free why should you choose us everything about what they are providing everything about pricing like very important information you will find them on their very first page so where do we find about us for big companies for big companies you have to scroll down here that's where they put the hyperlinks for all other important informations and they even start again with the platform and the solution they are providing and then the customers and then the company like the company it's some of the information that can come later so they put it here so you can come uh in the company section then click about snowflake and then you can read more about them how it all started learning about how these two co-founders started snowflakes um and everything they have about uh you know important numbers in their organization then meet the leadership we are going to be seeing it and everything around uh, what you can know about them. Um, yeah, and then they have sections about learn about Snowflex, learn more in the newsroom, from blogs, from customers, on their policies and everything Snowflake. But yeah, you will get to know about Snowflake. Actually, like this kind of video can give you something solid, just like one word or two words that these people believed in for them to start Snowflake and you say it at the very start of the interview, oh God, it's going to be snapping in the employer, potential employer's mind. Because this kind of um, uh, what the co-founders always repeat become like a motto or something inside the company. I don't know if you have realized it, but there are companies that you can know their, their, their slogan or inside common slogan by just looking at a video of the co-founder. So yeah, um, this is it about them. Um, then let's continue when it comes to, um, what was it? Okay, okay, uh, yeah, I was trying to remember why I kept this open tab here. Uh, when you keep going into about, about, in the about section, let me see where I got the link. Yeah, when, okay, let's go back because I know what I can see. So when you are still learning about them, then by clicking learn more, I was looking for something short that can, that is also like a video to help me catch the information quickly. And this is what I found. This is where that page about to learn more took me. And of course I was here like, why Snowflakes? Why do people choose Snowflakes? And they have this three minutes video. It will give you all the information you want to know. And as I take in the video, you are going to be able to understand all this information better than me. But just a three minutes video and you already know about the company and that's it. You are able to go ahead to the next point, which is the organizational structure. So organizational structure. On the company website, you can be able to find its important information. Then uh, you can look under our team or the leadership section on the website, or you can even go to LinkedIn to see the rest of the employees, especially those within the department. So the screenshots here, this is a screenshot from, sorry, this is a screenshot from Snowflex on the team, um, yeah, on the team section. And then uh, this is a screenshot from LinkedIn from people. I was filtering AI, AI engineers and I saw that they have 199 people with the name engineering and also who has uh, with the name engineer and who has AI or ML or DE within their profile name. So let's go there and see. Um, company. Uh, we already saw these on the website. Meet the team. Okay, let's go down here. On the company overview. 
uh, you can find them under our team or you can even find them other car under careers. Yeah, uh, under careers, why? Because they will try to show you who is already in the team and like who are you actually going to be meeting up and or oh let's see let's see let's see stay in the room mm -hmm. okay it's here under uh, under careers then you come here on teams And then you are going to be able to see who is in the team and uh, the departments they have and any important information you can know about them. And uh, majority of the um, or majority of the companies that will even display like big names like from the president's big position people like from the president's to the CEO, the co-founders and everything. Like, let's come here and look at meet the team on the leadership position. Like majority of the people we are going to be finding their big people position, you know, CFOs, CROs, chief marketings, and you know, like big names. But how do we find people within our department? So it's where we go on LinkedIn. I go on my LinkedIn page and search down Snowflake. Then we already have Snowflake. And then you come here and the people and look at, they have 8K employees. And for you to see the kind of people you need, you can type in AI engineers, or you can type in data engineers at everyone. Okay, I made a mistake. So on AI engineers, we have 199 people and you can, they just di display people who have some of those keywords in their, in their profile somewhere. So it's better just to look at those who you need. For instance, this person, you can look up them, see what kind of experience they have, see if you can connect try to find uh, um, entry level people as well. Like you can scroll through and see those who you specifically need and uh, connect with them, start a conversation and that's it. And actually when we are still on this point, let me show you um, the importance of actually getting to know uh, who is in the company and why it is important specifically. So number one, it helps you know how you can quote the founder or CEO's most recent post or publication. This is a technique that happens everywhere. Like almost all the people in the hiring team, because they spend so much time on LinkedIn or on their social media pages, they are able to see the founder or the CEO's almost all post about them. So when you quote about something that the CEO posted recently and you comment about you comment about it maybe they asked you a question about let's improvise let's like which question um you know maybe the ceo talked about any the, the recent releases they're about to do or the recent releases that they are happy to have done and you are in the sec in the section of your interview where you are supposed to ask them you know some few questions they tell you can you ask us any question and then you caught this, you'd be like, I saw the CEO posted about this. So how is it going internally? I mean, trying to make yourself like you actually know about it and you challenge them to also uh, see if they actually, uh, they, they actually keep themselves updated about this, about this current, the, the, the trends from the CEOs and the founders. Why? Because a company of 80K people, not everyone really follow about all uh, releases or all, you know, everything that is going on in the company. 
not all people really follow that. But you know, this shows that you actually know about something that is going on internally. And then number two, it helps you know who you can reach for extra information to prepare for your interviews. I want to show you, this is very important, especially when you need some hints. Uh, maybe they told you you're going to be meeting this person and you chat, uh, you, you go on LinkedIn, chat with another employee in there, ask them about different information about that person so that you can learn them, know what to expect, or learn more about their product. I mean, anything that you need to prepare for your interview. It helps you so much. And I want to give you a personal experience of what I did in 2022 on a company I ended up joining by that time. But later came to see that it was not aligning well with my career goals, so I had to leave. But I want to show you that this works from a personal experience. What did I do? Okay. Okay, it was a colleague called Amin. I mean, Greg. Let's start the conversation. Okay, my internet is disappointing me. Okay, so I inboxed him, like, hi, Amin. And I started by complimenting about something on himself. This is how you connect with someone by not just communicating your needs, but just appreciating them firstly. So I said, I liked your post about your experience at Oyster. So amazing and happy for you for everything you are achieving with it. You know, so amazing and happy for you. And then I say, I introduced myself, I'm Pascaline, and happy to meet you. I'm applying at Oyster, and I'm happy to come around your account because I've been looking for general support from someone who works there as I prepare for my interview. Then I asked, would you like to con to help? If yes, I will go ahead and el elaborate. So let's connect. And he was so welcoming. He actually replied like within a minute. He And I was like, okay, this is the person. He replied and said that he is willing to assist. I went ahead and asked about everything. I asked, of course, first of all, I suggested that we can have a Zoom call, but he did not go for it. Majority of the people were not allowed to have Zoom calls because they are afraid that you may ask some uh, confidential information and they will not be able to answer them and they don't want to look awkward or feel like they do not want to give you those information, you know? So he denied to have a Zoom call. So I went ahead and just wrote everything I was, um, I needed to ask. I, I, it was, the company was very new to me and I asked him like, uh, I'm meeting this person. So what do they do actually in there? Do you know about them? Um, I was going to be meeting actually the VP of the team. So that's why I was kind of freaking out. So I asked him, like, what do you think and everything about, I mean, I asked him a lot of questions. He took voice notes, explained everything. I went ahead, um, kept him in the loop about everything we were doing in the interview process. I asked him about uh, compensation information. I asked him a, lo a lot of things. Um, and then happily it went through um okay okay then with the assignment also i received an assignment where it was very very challenging and he helped me with just basic information for me to understand what it is he told me just one word oyster is an eor employer of record and when i was in my interviews i was repeating that word over and over and the employer was so much amazed how I even know about employer of record because it was a new product in the industry. So, so many people didn't know about it. But I kept commenting about it because I, you know, Abin already told me and I researched about it and I got to know about it. So that's how I won the, their hearts. So everything ended, everything ended. And I came here to tell him that, you know, I mean, hi. 
I'm so happy that this time I have good news. I got the offer today an hour ago and everything. And, you know, he was happy for me. So reaching out to people for help really works. It works big time. So get to know the people within the company. If you are interested, inbox a couple of them, see who replies first. By the way, before Amin replied me, I DM'd like almost 10 people and nobody got back to me until I found, I went and looked for the one who's most active on LinkedIn. So Amin was very, very active on LinkedIn. And that's why he was quick and responding and helping. So try to use all different strategies to get to win the heart of what person who's working in there so that they can give you information. Let's move forward with the cultures and values. On the company website, that's where you can find all information about culture and values, and also on employer review websites like Glassdoor, Indeed, um, you know, they have employer review that uh, offer insights into the company. So on Snowflakes, you can go um, under About Us still, you will find our the section of the, the their values. And you can see that the first thing they value is someone who puts the customers first. So this way, you know that in your interviews, you will not only be talking about what you will do, but how this is going to be helping the customers. I mean, everyone in all departments, whether you are technical or not technical, everyone in the company works for the customers of the company. So always talking about how you are customer centric, even though you are a tech person and how that is going to be helping the company you are going to be winning their hearts. And then you continue by integrity. I don't know if you can get how to explain this, by th but by thinking big, you know, this is something you can also be bringing on. I'm the person who think big. And this time, um, um, yeah, I'm the person who think big and this and that. Like you, like you find a way to phrase your sentences, but in a way that it brings up like two or three of their values in very important and then let's have a look at glassdoor what they talk about snowflake uh with their um in their culture and everything so you go to go you you go to glassdoor and then uh search snowflake here we are so i can i went to glassdoor here and then i typed in company under companies i searched snowflake and they gave me all information about it. And the very first, very first review I I saw was from um, was from who's this person again? Is the vice president of strategy and ops in Snowflake, and it gives you a glimpse of what this company do with the pros. They had working intelligent and kind peers, many long term leaders who act as culture carriers. When they say many long-term leaders, you know that majority of them, they are grown adult people, maybe within their 40s or 50s. So you kind of know uh, the, 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 the population of the people you are going to be meeting in the interviews. And this time, you know how you are going to be behaving because these are people who are so keen on the important things, the values, the value you are going to be bringing in the team. Like they are tough people. So this time you know what to predict. And then you CEO with clear vision to keep us growing. Now you know that they have a new CEO, you know, and uh, it's important information. And then about the cons, food is good, I've gained 10 pounds. And this tells you that majority of their team work on ground, like they don't work remotely. So in case you go into their interviews and everything, you know, you may have to relocate. Um, you know just there or you get to even know that maybe they are considering candidates on ground more than how they are considering candidates who are applying remotely so just important information to know what to expect so why is it important it helps you um let's see okay i think i doubled the show of their product okay let's ignore this i that put these slides sorry for that so let's go but why is it important we already saw why knowing about the culture and values 
why it's already important. So let's go to the product and services, very important aspect of the job search. Getting to know um, what their product, what their offerings are, what are their products or services in details. And you can find this on company website or even industry reports. On industry reports, I recommend going to Y Combinator for startups or go to Crunchbase for big companies. These two platforms, they hold many information about many companies out here, especially those that, that do software as a service. So they provide insights into the company's market position, comparing it to its competitors and everything. But, you know, basically getting to know about the, how the product is doing in the job market. So for Snowflake, you can find it uh, on why Snowflake. You will get to know about the products. And then on the uh, on why, okay, yeah, this is also from the, pro, from the website. So you can go up there when you have written platform, and then you will be able to see all these drop downs. And you can check whatever you want that can give you information that you need. And then on Y Combinator, it's a lot of things to navigate Y Combinator. So please navigate it when you have time doing the challenge. But why is it important? Is that this will help you to tailor your cover letter by showing, showcasing your knowledge of their product and the overall industry and how your skills can contribute to their success. You know, when you get in an interview and you are starting to talk, you, you, you talk like someone who knows their product. Even if you don't know a lot of things, but you know that product, you know how it's doing out there in the market and what the competitors are doing, I'm telling you, yeah, you, you really win their trust from there. They see that you put in an, an effort of understanding where they are. And even it gives them the belief that when they get to hire you, you are not that person who will take them so much time trying to trying to train you, trying to make you understand their product and everything, because they know you've done your assignment before. And then uh, second last, which is the current trends, important as well. You know, getting to know um, about uh, the current trends, you can find them on LinkedIn or check the by checking the recent posts to know the recent updates. You don't have to scroll further, just take check the recent one or two posts, you are done. And then the website blogs, <clears throat> look for the blog section to learn more about any new publication. And you can check about the current trends when you are on the interview level, because that's when you need these informations. Yeah, it even helps you bring like casual conversation when you are starting the interview or when you are ending the interview, like, trying to keep yourself friendly to them by talking about like, for instance, a snowflake, they have um, they have an, a summit that was going on three weeks ago and this was their recent post. So, you know, basically talking, asking them about like, actually how was the summit, you know, um, for you? What did you like? What did you enjoy? You know, aside from the technical things that were being discussed there. Maybe they will tell you about the food or if they were new in Francisco, start talking about the weather. And that's how you connect a connection. You, you, you bring a connection with them. So yeah, better to know about the current strains before going for an interview. And uh, also in your cover letter, you can show your no. Why did I mix this? <laughs> okay. This is also a mistake, but let's continue on future prediction. Future predictions, um, yeah, again, to get to know what the companies like uh, Crunchbase or other external medias or Y Combinator think about the company and its performance in the future. So better also to get this kind of information, get to type specifically what you are looking for. So for me, what I tapped typed here to get the information I needed was predicting the future of Snowflex, the IT company. So they gave me information about uh, the fact that based um, thanks to their cloud-based data warehousing technology and ability to store large volumes of data cost-effectively, 
in an easily manageable format, you know, more businesses should adopt to Snowflake for future data warehousing needs. We anticipate an upswing in adoption. So this tells you the company is going to be there for long. And also you can quote this somewhere within your interviews or within your cover letter, you know, trying to appreciate the work they are doing, you know, because uh, these are better important information. Like they already told, told you cl they are cloud-based, they, they have cloud-based data warehousing technology and it has this ability to store a large volume of, uh, store a large volumes of data on a very effective cost. So this is kind of a compliment you can refer to somewhere. So yeah, so we've seen very few info. It, when I was explaining it, it sounded like it's a lot of things, but when you are doing your research, try to grab very few important information. You don't need to know everything, but try to grab very few important information on each of these uh, things that were mentioned here. Company history, organizational structure, culture and values, products, current trends, and future prediction. When you know even one sentence, one answer to everything here, you are really good to go. Yeah, that is it. We have already gone through the challenge and it's well explained unless anyone has any question or any discussion point. Sure, Ahmed. Uh, I have a question about uh, the cover letter, Baskarin. So can you explain it more or and how it's important? Uh, I think you, you said how it's important, but uh, what is it exactly and the difference between it and the CV? Oh, yes. So there is something we did not talk about when we were, um, when we were preparing all these materials, which is cover letters but it's coming next week on Monday. It's one of the sessions. We will go through what is the cover letter, what are the important aspects of the cover letters, and what you should actually put in your cover letters. Yeah, you know, basically that. And then also the good thing, I'm not sure if Abdullah made this here. Okay, here's not. But one of the beautiful thing about the tanks job feature uh, job feature that you will be seeing called Leap. It helps you generate a cover letter and a CV that are tailored to the job description. You know, so again, by like by making it make sense, uh, when you are using Leap, there there is somewhere you get to upload your CV, and then. Uh, the AI that is built within Leap, it looks at the reality of your CV and then the job description. And then it gives you another CV that has some of the poems that are written in the job description reflecting on your CV. So we try, we, we actually developed this feature that is the work for you. And now you have your CV that doesn't go away from the reality of who you are but also that includes some of the few words from the job description and then also releases a cover letter that combines your experiences with some of the poems that are mentioned within the job description and that is why it's it's very important that we still tell you that next week it's very important that you will be selecting jobs that you feel like you are very close to being a qualified candidate there so that the cover letter can come with um with informations that are not biased and together with your cv that they can come with not biased informations so abdullah Mid musa will tell us more about that because even though i'm saying it i'm not very very sure if we are ready to use that feature or not or if we will be just receiving the jobs and going to apply manually so I'm still, I may be biased with those two information if they are ready or not, but by Monday, Abdullah Mid Musa and someone also called Good Day and Yabi, 
they will be giving you much information about the system and how it's going to be working. But that's the beauty of it. So luckily, hopefully, we will be having the fetch ready because that will ease the work. Like you don't have to do anything manual when it comes to customizing your application materials. Yeah. Did I answer your question, Ahmed? I believe yes. Okay, thank you so much. Any other question? Okay, if there are no any other questions, then we can call it a meeting, enjoy the rest of the day. I'm super excited about what we are going to be doing with the job applications. Like I'm, I'm sensing good news only, you know, after that. So yeah, let's keep up the spirits. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.